Good Monday morning. Does it ever fully dawn on you the way it does to me that you and I really are in a battle for our very lives? I've said it so often to us that it's important for us to remember that we're spirit beings living in a natural world. But the enemy loves getting us to think and believe that we're natural beings living in a spirit world. Because if he can get us to believe that, then he can get us, our eyes, so focused on what's happening here that we forget there's this cosmic battle up here. So when he does that, then you and I will surrender our lives to things that have so little value because we've lost sight of the fact that this world is in our home and one day all of this is gonna go up in a puff like a vapor and all that's going to be left is what's here. That's why Jesus' language was so extreme. Um, it's why in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 23 through 25, he says this. He says, if anyone wants to come after me, let him say no to himself and take up his, and, and the Jewish study Bible says it this way, which I think is really sobering, his execution stake daily. That means that every day when you and I get up, we're going to have to remember, you know what? I am a spirit man living in a natural world. And I have to, on this day, say, Lord, you have all of me. I know that this life is fleeting, that one day I'm gonna be with you, so I don't wanna put any stock any of my um, treasures here in this life, and I wanna live completely surrendered to you today. And then it says, and keep following me, for whoever tries to save his own life is going to end up losing his life. And then verse 62, he, a man comes to him and he says, um, I want to follow you wherever you go, but first let me say goodbye to my family. One even says, let me go back and bury um, my dad. And, and Jesus says this, which is like, Jesus, can't a man go back and just bury his mama? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But Jesus, what Jesus is saying is very different. And these are his words. He says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and keeps looking back is fit to serve in the kingdom of God. He's not saying, I don't want you to go, I don't want you to not go bury your mama. What he's saying is you can't keep looking back at what you've left behind to follow me. If you keep looking back, then that's really where your heart is. Do you remember when the children of Israel escaped Egypt and they had seen God do all these things? He sent 10 plagues to Egypt and they haven't been touched by one of them. They leave and flee and he, he parts the Red Sea and they don't just walk out on soggy ground, they walk out on completely dry ground. And then they look back and they watch Pharaoh's armies destroyed. Then he sends a cloud by day to cover them and a fire by night to lead them. He gives them manna, fresh bread from heaven and quail that falls from the sky. He does all of this. And do you know what they do over and over and over again? They mumble and they complain and they say, oh, I wish I was back in Egypt in my slavery. What? And yet we do the same thing. And God is saying, listen, Jesus is saying, listen, I require all of you. And the reason he requires all of us is because he knows in this natural world, the enemy is using every natural um, pleasure to seduce us. From money to power to sex to entertainment to distraction to progressive Christianity. To giving us a palatable gospel that doesn't require something of us. Well, do you know what? All of those things, if they become our treasure, he said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we will forfeit our own soul. He said, you'll gain all this. You'll gain a gospel that makes you comfortable. 
You'll gain all the pleasures of this life because you refuse to say no to your flesh. But let me tell you, just like I told you before, the enemy loves to show you the prize and never the price. But there is a price. There is a battle for your life, rest assured. And the enemy is relentless. And it requires a courageous Christianity and a complete and total surrender. There is nothing back there worth going back to. Paul said, I press on toward the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he knew that's where the real prize was. Paul said, I die daily. Because Paul knew that the greater prize was in eternity than it ever would be found here. Friends, he'll show you the prize but he'll never show you the price. And the price ultimately is your life. You're in a war zone. The price Jesus asks is not too much. Because he said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. Jesus knows the reward. And it is worth the price he would ask us to pay. If your heart was encouraged today, please know that we have many other resources available for you. You can discover all of those at reclaiminghearts.org.